What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Sunday, March 17th, 2024, and I have some breaking news to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1428 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from Europe. So, the French President Emmanuel Macron again said that he would be willing to send troops into Ukraine and do whatever is necessary to counter Russian forces. He said this on Friday night in an interview that was published yesterday evening on Saturday in France. He said that Western ground operations in Ukraine might be necessary at some point. Maybe at some point, I don't want it. I won't take the initiative. We will have to have operations on the ground, whatever they may be, to counter the Russian forces. And he said this to the Le Parisian newspaper, okay? He also said, France's strength is that we can do it, okay? So he's saying France is strong enough that they can actually do that. And a few days ago, he said in an interview that was published Thursday evening, on French TV that France has nuclear weapons and they're not worried about Russia retaliating. Okay, so this is huge news, guys. Emmanuel Macron saying that Western ground operations in Ukraine might be necessary at some point. He said that they may have to use uh, not only ground forces, but whatever they may be to counter the Russian forces. Okay, so this is extremely serious news. And here we have another emergency alert that was sent out this past week. This was on March 14th, Thursday morning. This was sent to me by another viewer in Germany. Check this out. Apparently, Germany was doing a civil defense exercise on Thursday, testing their emergency alert system, sending out these messages here to people across Germany, and also they were testing their air raid sirens, and this is extremely unusual in Germany. They normally only do this once a year, and they had already done this exercise a few months ago, so this was the second exercise in a six-month period. Okay, so very unusual. You can see the date here, Thursday, March 14th, 11 a.m. Here was uh, same thing from another viewer that sent this to me. Okay. Extreme Gaffar. I don't know what that means in German, but very, very serious situation. Germany tested their civil defense system on Thursday. Very, very unusual. And we also know that Germany has put their Taurus missiles on combat alert. So something is brewing. And overnight last night, Ukraine targeted Russia with a massive drone attack. They targeted the Moscow Domidovo airport. They also targeted another refinery. The Russian Ministry of Defense said that they destroyed 35 Ukrainian drones launched at night in eight Russian regions. Several drones attacked Moscow's Domidovo airport. And the Russian military also said that the Ukrainian military dropped explosive devices from four drones in a village in the Belgorod region. Apparently, there were no casualties, but electricity and gas supply lines were damaged. And Russian air defenses are claiming to have destroyed several Ukrainian drones in the Moscow region. Okay, so a widespread drone attack last night targeting refineries, targeting the airport in Moscow, uh, targeting some electricity and gas supply in uh, Belgorod. And then on top of that, we have the partisans that are continuing to do their thing. And here we have a picture of one of these partisans putting a flag up, one of their flags, in the village of Kazinka, which is right on the border of Ukraine. This is a Russian town, and the partisans have now captured this town. We're also getting reports that apparently Chechen volunteers 
that have allied themselves with Ukraine and the Russian partisans have captured a Russian village in the Belgorod region. This is the village of Gorkovsky. They also received help from the Siberian Battalion, which is made up of ethnic minorities from Siberia who want independence from Russia. So we know that at least two villages have been captured officially so far by these partisans. Okay, the Chechens uh, captured the Gorkovsky village and this other partisan group captured the uh, Kazinka village. Okay, so this is just the beginning, guys. It's only going to spread. They're going to capture more and more villages. And apparently this morning, Ukraine struck this Russian helicopter in Transnistria. This is the separatist region in Moldova. You can see this video footage here of some type of drone hitting this MI-8 helicopter and the helicopter getting completely destroyed. This would be the first time that Ukraine has actually targeted Transnistria directly. Okay, so this is a historic event as far as this war goes. They have not targeted Transnistria yet. And the Transnistrian government is claiming that this helicopter was inoperable. And apparently the drone was launched from the Odessa region. Here you can see the wreckage of the helicopter after that drone hit it. You can see basically nothing left. Absolutely insane, guys. Look at that. Just completely burned up this entire helicopter. What's very interesting is how they would have this camera right there. Um, it just almost seems like it's staged, you know, to blame Ukraine for uh, attacking Transnistria. And so this way Russia can come to the rescue and annex Transnistria because two weeks ago, Transnistria and also Galgazia, which is another separatist region of Moldova, were begging Putin to annex them and save them from the Moldovan government. So this could have been like a staged event to basically get support from Putin and from Russia to annex them. And we know that in the early 90s, these breakaway regions of Moldova were involved in a very bloody battle with Moldova. So that could happen again. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't. We have to pray that it doesn't. This update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three-month emergency food supply has a 25-year shelf life. It includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets. And free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just gotta click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to prepare with nyprepper.com at the top of the page and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running discounts here. So use the link, preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. And a lot of people have been complaining that they can't find me as easily on YouTube anymore, and... One way to find me easily on YouTube is to just put the at symbol in front of NY Prepper. So when you search for my channel, don't just put NY Prepper, put at NY Prepper, okay, with no space between the at symbol and NY Prepper. And that should pull my channel right up because YouTube implemented this new uh, hashtag system a few months ago. So that's my new handle is at NY Prepper, okay? 
You can also go to my website, newyorkprepper.com, and if you click under YouTube videos, I have all my latest YouTube videos uploaded here. They automatically upload, okay? So you can either check my website, newyorkprepper.com, link is below this video, or just type at NY Prepper, and my channel will come right up when you search me in the YouTube search bar. And we currently have two nuclear war command and control planes in the air over the United States. And there was apparently a long emergency action message broadcasted this afternoon, a 246 character emergency action message, which is unusual for a Sunday afternoon and to have two of these nuclear war command and control planes in the air on a Sunday afternoon is pretty unusual. Okay, so I'm going to continue to monitor them. Here we have some footage that was sent to me by a viewer showing what appears to be either a Black Hawk or an Apache patrolling the San Francisco Bay flying over the Golden Gate Bridge. This was Friday, and this person told me that this is extremely unusual to see. So let me just share this video with you. You can see the Golden Gate Bridge down there. And there were actually several of them patrolling the San Francisco Bay Area. So I don't know what's going on over there, but pretty unusual, and they were specifically patrolling around the Golden Gate Bridge. So I don't know what type of helicopters these are. It's a little bit hard to tell, okay? If any of you guys have an idea, let me know. And here we have a picture of a doomsday plane that was airborne over the Midwest yesterday. This was sent to me by a viewer. So our nuclear forces are on high alert. Our military is on high alert. And here we have some footage coming from one of the airports in Moscow that was hit by drones last night. This is the Damidavo airport. So check this out. So Ukraine is striking deep into Russia. Here we have some more footage coming from a warehouse at that airport that was hit by the drone. Check this out. Wow, look at that, guys. Absolutely insane. So Putin is definitely going to be infuriated by this. We'll have to wait and see what his response is going to be. Here we have some video footage coming from the Belgorod region. Something's burning over there. So fighting is continuing in southwestern Russia between the Russian partisan groups and the Russian military. It doesn't look like they're running into much resistance. So it looks like they're probably going to capture these entire cities potentially and try to hold them. Here we have some video footage coming out of Russia. This was another refinery that was hit last night. Looks like probably about 12 or 15 refineries, oil refineries, have been hit by Ukrainian drones over the last two or three days. And that has reduced Russia's refining capacity by 10%. Okay, you can see these two fireballs here. And here we have a picture showing the locations of some of these oil refineries that were hit over the last few days. And you can see some of them were as far as 900 kilometers away from Ukraine. Okay, so Ukraine has a long range drone capability now. And I reported yesterday that 
Grant Shapps, the British defense minister, was supposed to go to Ukraine, and apparently he canceled his trip after British intelligence warned that Russia could try to strike him with a missile. Okay, they could try to strike his convoy with a missile, so they had to cancel his trip. And this comes just a day after his airplane was jammed in Poland when he was returning from Poland, I guess. He was only 60 miles from the Russian border when suddenly his GPS started to fail. And I reported yesterday also that the Finnish foreign minister, Alina Voltanen, said that they have not ruled out sending troops into Ukraine. And I also reported yesterday and the day before that Belarus has moved tanks and BMPs to the border of Lithuania. Apparently, an entire train full of T-72s and BMP-2s were spotted in the Ashmiani train station just 10 kilometers from the border of Lithuania in Belarus and that's very close to Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. And so this is extremely concerning, guys. Okay, Belarus is building up their forces on the border of Lithuania. They're going to be doing a territorial defense exercise from April 2nd through the 26th. This is the same thing that Russia and Belarus did right before they invaded Ukraine. And this territorial defense exercise is going to be taking place just 40 kilometers from the border with Lithuania. Very suspicious. And here we have a picture of some Belarusian troops training. This was taken just a few days ago. Look at all of these BMPs here piled up in this open area. And BMPs are specifically made for crossing water. And this part of the world has a lot of swampy areas, a lot of streams and rivers. So this is exactly what you would need to cross the terrain in Lithuania and Belarus, all the thick forests with all the swamps and rivers, okay? So things are about to escalate, guys. I think we could see a parallel operation going on where Belarus is going to invade Lithuania while Russia sends hundreds of thousands of troops to eastern Ukraine. And by having Belarus invade Lithuania, it's going to be Belarus that's going to war with NATO, not so much Russia. And that could be a way for Russia to avoid getting involved and avoid a direct confrontation with NATO by having Belarus do the invasion. Okay. And apparently... Russia could be annexing South Ossetia, which is part of Georgia. In 2008, there was a war between Georgia and Russia where uh, Russia basically took part of George, where Russia basically took part of Georgia by force, the South Ossetia region. And now apparently the South Ossetian Parliament chairman Alan Albarov said, we are discussing the possibility of being incorporated into the Russian Federation and that they're going to have a referendum on this topic very soon, okay? So you see what Russia is doing here? They're nibbling away at all these different territories, okay? They're trying to restore the USSR. And NATO has started building a new base in Romania that could be bigger than Ramstein, the size of a small city on an area of almost 3,000 hectares, the location will be able to permanently host up to 10,000 NATO soldiers and their families. The project, worth 2.5 billion euros, includes runways, weapons platforms, hangars for military aircraft, but also schools, kindergartens, shops, and even a hospital. And what you're looking at here is a picture uh, showing the proposed base. And here we have some footage coming out of Bulgaria. Bulgaria is sending a massive amount of armored vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles, and various types of war machines to Ukraine. Look at this, guys. Massive amount here. Apparently, this includes BTR-60s and BRDM-2 armored vehicles. But that's the latest breaking news that I have. I will be back later on tonight with more breaking news. So 
Until then, take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, if you want to learn about some of the most infamous terrorist leaders in the Middle East, you got to check out Gaza's Most Wanted. They have these playing cards and shooting range targets with all the most infamous terrorists printed on them. So this way you can learn what they look like and who they are while playing a game of poker or while having fun at the range practicing your skills. 10% of proceeds are donated to support the Israeli Defense Forces. So check them out, gazasmostwanted.com. And if you use the promo code NYPREPPER, you get 5% off of your entire order. So I'm going to leave a link and the promo code in the description below this video.